Hello and welcome to another episode of the Wannabe Entrepreneur, the podcast about what's really like to bootstrap a company. My name is Tiago, I'm your host, and I'm happy to be talking to you. It's been a week since we talked and I really missed this, this little time, this 20 to 30 minutes of only us, where I can share with you my victories, my challenges, everything related to my bootstrapping journey. I'm really happy, as you can see. And in today's episode, I'll be talking about uh, my YouTube experiment. I've been uploading my episodes to YouTube, my podcast episodes to YouTube, and I want to tell you what the results are, as well with what I've been doing and what I've been up to in the past week, some interesting things. Not a lot of things actually happen, but I think there are some interesting lessons to share with you and some interesting experiments too. So, without any further ado, let's get started with today's episode. 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 Okay, let's go. So, I've been practicing Muay Thai for the past three or four months. It's been great. It's been a lifesaver, really. Before that, I came from those two years of COVID where it was super hard to do any exercise. Besides that, I moved from Germany to Lisbon and it was really hard to kind of reconnect with my friends and uh, start doing sports again. And then Muay Thai came along. And uh, it brought some consistency to my life. Now, two times per week, I have one hour and a half of exercise, which is very consistent, really, really intense, and I get to learn something new. I get to learn a new martial art. And the way the exercises line up is kind of constant, always the same. So you get to the class and you have a high-intensity warm-up, then you get paired with uh, another fighter and you do exercise together and then in the end sometimes you get to do sparring which is basically fighting we don't go hard sparring it's mostly trying to score points but of course that sometimes things get a little bit more intense to be honest i wish i could do a little bit more sparring because most of our time is just practicing and doing the exercise but there's something interesting, something interesting that I've been realizing. So normally I get paired with uh, younger people than me and people that are a little bit smaller. Maybe my coach thinks that I'm uh, not uh, good enough to fight people with my weight class. But generally, I, it's not hard for me to spar with them. It's easy for me to score points. And I don't want to sound kind of arrogant like, yeah, I can beat everyone. No, that's not true. And it happened already that I got matched with people that are more experts and I completely got beaten up. But one thing that I started realizing is that fighting is mostly about confidence. When we are fighting, if you score one or two punches, your opponent will be afraid, will be afraid to attack you because... By doing that, they will open their guards and then you will strike them. And I've been fighting with this person in regularly, basically. And uh, the first time we, we fight, I completely dominated. He couldn't score a punch. And then eventually it got better and better and better. And today we started sparring again. And again, I started by dominating, scoring a lot of punches. And suddenly... He caught me off guard and landed a really good punch right in the middle of my nose. And suddenly everything changed. He started to fight much better. He was able to defend much better, to attack much better. He regained his confidence as a fighter. And from then on, the fight was much more balanced. It's interesting because, again, it's just a matter of confidence. In the beginning, he was afraid. I was able to land a lot of punches. He was just defending. He was afraid to lower his guard. The moment he landed a punch, he understood that, yeah, there was fight in him, that 
he had a winning chance. After our sparring and the training, I was walking back home and thinking about that punch, that punch that he was able to land. And I was just thinking, how can I make it better? How could I have defended it? How can I become a better fighter? I was kind of punishing myself for letting my guard down and have suffered a punch. After thinking about it for a little while, I started realizing that I only suffered one punch, but I landed so many more. Why I was punishing myself so much? And I immediately made the bridge between that, that experience with my bootstrapping experience, where landing a punch kind of uh, translates to getting a new client, getting great feedback, getting a tweet that goes viral. And that makes us feel like we have a winning chance, like we can one day live from our bootstrapping projects. But the moment things do not go our way, we start thinking that it won't be possible. I start to realize that as well as in a fight, our confidence can really, really influence our success in the bootstrapping world. The expression fake it until you make it is really true. It can really change. Not only change the way others see you, you transpire confidence. So people will bet in you, they will follow you, they want to know what you're up to. And yourself as well. You will start thinking that maybe you can really make it. You will make better decisions and you won't let these little punches that the others can give you, that your project can give you, to discourage you so much. It's normal. When you go sparring, you will get punched. That happens. That's kind of the point. But you will also do a lot of your punches as well. And, and it's the same with indie hacking. It's the same with anything worthwhile in life. There's risks and you will suffer but you have to focus in the positive and keep your confidence. This week, I got punched again. I, I've been working on the WB Quora, as you know, which basically was my idea to get more SEO content. And I realized that we have so many interesting groups in our community, and there's one in particular called Looking for Advice. Here, people ask questions to the community about bootstrapping. Can be coding-related questions, can be marketing, or any other topic. And it's always super interesting discussions. And a lot of people come and answer. So I thought, wow, maybe by making this available publicly, I, I can not only create a quota that uh, the members of the community can easily explore, but as well is a SEO opportunity. It's a golden opportunity, really, because there's great content there, content that interests to all indie hackers out there that uh, I don't have to actively create. The members are doing so, and I can just make it public and therefore get that sweet, sweet SEO traffic that will eventually convert some of the users into WB members. However, I might not have done this in the most sensible way. And uh, I realize that now. So I really like to follow the it's better ask for forgiveness than for permission motto. And even though I do believe that if you want to make things fast, you sometimes need to follow that. It's not always the right approach. So when I basically created that little website, I shared it with the community and I said, hey, now all of your uh, questions are publicly available here. If you don't want one of your questions to be available, let me know and I'll remove them. Of course, that this is not the best approach because uh, people did not know that some of their questions will be publicly available, even though, of course, Slack is somehow... Well, it's not entirely public, right? So people have to pay to access it. And uh, right now, people could just read it if they would find the website. 
And I get some some concerns. Some of the members came to me and told, okay, Tiago, this is great. I actually really enjoy what you have made, but I, I don't want you to just publicly share the community content because there are certain topics that I discuss in the community, but I don't want other people to know. And I I completely understand this. They were very nice and they basically gave me their feedback. And as a community manager, I'm here to receive feedback and improve. So I merely said that uh, I will never do this again to other groups. Uh, I will always first ask around, ask if it's okay to do so, and then I will make it public available if, if, if it's okay. If not, I will find another option. And I also gathered the feedback and improved on the current process of making the WB Quorum. So now it's much more complex, it's much more transparent. The, the channel now in the description, you can read that uh, some of the questions might be public. I also have a recurrent message that is sent to the group. And besides that, for every question, once it goes public, I send an automatic notification to the author and they can opt out. They can just say, I don't want my question to be public. They click a button and then it gets removed. In the end, it all ended well, but I felt that I, I let the community members down and uh, I immediately started thinking, oh my God, what have I done? People will start losing confidence in the community. How can I make it better? And again, I was focusing too much in one punch. I started spiraling and uh, this is really not a good way to deal with these kind of situations and uh, for the future I just need to treat it as a business. I need to accept that I will fail and uh, need to focus on the positives. Okay, let's fix what I failed, let's make sure I won't do that again, but let's not drill down into the mistakes. In the end, I'm still quite happy with the results. I think Quora, the WB Quora is great. There's a lot of interesting content right there. By the way, if you want to go and check it out, you can go to wannabe-entrepreneur.com slash questions and uh, you can see everything that our members are uh, discussing. Of course, you cannot discuss yourself. You cannot ask a question unless you are a WB member, but at least if... There are questions that uh, were discussed in the community that can help you as well in your indie journey. Well, hopefully you'll find them and they will help you. This is one thing that happened in the community and uh, that's basically the most exciting or, well, quote-unquote exciting things around my projects because in the past week I've been basically kind of on holiday more or less. I, I didn't really plan it to be a holiday. I wanted to work a little bit, but yeah, in the end, I didn't do it. So basically, a friend of mine came and visit. He was here for one week. He came from Canada. So I really wanted to, to be with him and, and enjoy the time because normally we live so far apart that I really wanted to enjoy the time. At first, I thought, okay, I will work one hour, two hours per day and then continue to enjoy the time. In the end, that didn't really work out. But it also made me think, the and, and the whole concept of eight hours work like why do we work eight hours like who created this it's so interesting because even for developers where you don't have a strict schedule so you don't need to work eight hours per day people only feel efficient if they at least on average have worked eight hours and if i ask any developer if you ask any developer you can ask them that, like, how many hours do you work per day, more or less? And they always say, yeah, around eight. Of course, there are some days where they work 12, other days where they work four, but they always go for this average. And yeah, why do we work eight? Why don't we work 10? Or why don't we work five? It's funny because it, this actually changes. Uh, before, maybe there were longer work days and maybe in the future they'll be shorter. But it's just a concept. So why do I also feel in my indie projects that I need to work eight hours a day? It makes no sense. So somehow this event of having my friend here and having to work because one or two days I, I was able to work actually a few hours. 
So having him here kind of made me realize that it is possible to work less. And and some of the times you are you are still productive. When you have eight hours of work, you try to fill in all of that time with things to do. And some things are really good, some things are really necessary, some things are not. You just want to do it. So I started to adapt a little bit the way I want to work in the community. I decided that I want to allocate only one to two hours per day in the community where I will be basically doing the managing of the community, scheduling events, and creating some features. And then all the rest of my time will be focusing doing other stuff. Hopefully new exciting projects. And uh, I have to say that I, I tried to start doing that yesterday, this Monday and today. And so far it didn't work really well because I had so much things accumulated that I ended up working the whole day on Monday. But hopefully now I'll be able to kind of reduce the time I work in the community and hopefully it will still bring value to everyone with my new strategies with SEO. I'll get people coming to the community still. And uh, I know that this is a long term goal. But yeah, this is what I'm trying right now. Speaking of my new marketing strategies, last week I told you that I've been focusing on YouTube and SEO. SEO is a long term game. So don't not expect any results. And, and so is YouTube, to be honest, because what happened was I basically created this script that posted all my backlog of 250 podcast episodes to YouTube. I immediately got a huge spike in views and uh, I thought, wow, this will be great. But it turns out that maybe this this was just the bots or the YouTube algorithm because the next day immediately went down and then it continued going down to basically the same amount of views I had before pushing my episodes, I did notice that I got a few new subscribers and some comments, even though they sound a little bit spammy. So yeah, I don't know. Let's see. I I see some views. I already see some traffic coming from YouTube to my website. Not a lot, really just a few, but Let's see. It's still too early to say. And uh, if you are an old listener, you might remember that I had an old channel, YouTube channel, that only after like one year of not publishing anything, it started to grow. So maybe I hope this same thing will happen here and the same thing will happen with SEO. Now, during my time off, during my little week of hanging out with my friend, I also got to hang out with someone really interesting, the founder of Indie Worldwide, Anthony. I also interviewed him here in the podcast, you might remember. But yeah, he's the founder of a very, of a competitor, basically a competitive product that recently, so before it was used to be free, but recently it, it made it paid and it's already making around like 2K MRR. It's been a huge growth. I'm so jealous about this growth. And uh, we got together, we went for uh, Nepalese food, a really good restaurant here in Lisbon, very authentic food. So if you are into food and into spicy food, do send me a DM on Twitter and I'll send you the restaurant. It was super cool. It was super nice. We are just chatting. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of people around, so we couldn't really focus on chatting in, the, in bootstrapping. But uh, we plan to do another kind of get together soon. Hopefully we can record something for you and where we will speak more about the community because it's so interesting for for the little while we're able to speak about our projects we i we could already see so many things we had in common and so many things i could learn from him and hopefully some things he can also learn from me so that part was really interesting he, he, he did tell me that i should increase the prices of the community but i kind of also realized that maybe we might have different targets i i, I do think that since i'm asking for only 10 bucks I'm targeting people that are want to be entrepreneurs, people that are just starting, people that most of the times do not have the money to pay for a lot for a community or anything. And uh, maybe him or Ramen Club, they are targeting people that have already business that are more established. Anyways, that was also a very fun thing that happened this past week. And um, last but not least, I just want to to let you know that I'm already kind of thinking about some new interesting projects. I'm, I'm planning to, to focus on that. As I told you, I, I want to spend more time in new things. 
And there's two ideas I, th I believe I've already shared. Uh, one is basically creating a SaaS out of this software or this process of uploading podcast episodes to YouTube. And I'm trying to still analyze a little bit if it's worth it or not. And the other one is to find a way to monetize that amount of traffic I'm getting on Change It Blog. I know that people come because they want to read about the impact of um, lithium batteries, the environmental impact of lithium batteries. And uh, every day, 150 people come to the website. So I don't know. I feel that I'm missing out on something because that's the dream. Like That's what I want to achieve with the WB space. I want people to come to the website without me having to do anything. So I already have that there. And it's just a waste that I'm not trying to monetize it. So that's what I've been trying to do. As you know, I have my guide. I created a guide, a step-by-step -step guide for to help people to bootstrap their projects. And I, I really follow this guide for myself. So I, I've been following all the steps and trying to somehow organize a, an idea and a product that can monetize that traffic that I'm getting on the, um, on the Change It block. So far... Uh, the only idea I have is to create a community, another community, yes. Uh, maybe it's because it's what I know. It's it's my only indie hacking project that really brought money. So, yeah, my idea is to find a co-create a community for people that are trying to buy a EV, an electric vehicle. And uh, I will play around with that. So far, I created a Discord channel. I asked around. I basically followed my guide and I'll try to see if I can get some people into the Discord channel for free. Well, if that doesn't work, there's probably other ways for me to monetize that blog and I really, really to do so. And uh, yeah, so now my extra time will be focused on that. And uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. That's, that's basically me. You are up to date with uh, Tiago's Indie Hacking Journey. And... Um, one last thing that is really, really, really cool. I will be a speaker on a conference. And now, as I'm saying this, I'm not sure if I already told you this in last episode or not. So if I did, I'm really sorry for the ones. Or if I didn't, here it is. Yeah. Um, Miguel, he was, um, or he's, he's a bootstrapper, Portuguese bootstrapper, and uh, a listener of the my podcast. He... He reached out to me. We've been uh, talking a little bit and uh, he told me that he has a bunch of interesting projects around and uh, yeah, he basically recommended my name to this conference. It's called Future Works and it's a conference about the future of work. So especially after COVID, there's a lot of remote work, people working from home and Basically, though, there's this new, completely new way of um, being viewing work and how, how, how management and everything. And there'll be a lot of interesting talks, and one of them will be mine. <laughs> yes, I will actually have two. I'll be in a panel where we'll be discussing uh, th topics around digital nomads, and then my talk will be how to become an indie hacker. Super exciting about that. I will hopefully share a little bit of my journey and what I've learned from the podcast. And I still have to prepare my interview. But this is great, isn't it? I, I've, I've been recommended because of this podcast. People actually listen to it. They like me and they recommend me to be in the, in the conference. And it's not a small conference. You might think, oh, it's a small conference. No, it's, it's actually not. There's uh, about 5,000 people per day. The tickets cost 150 bucks. <laughs> 150 bucks? People will be paying that to see me speak. Can you, can you believe that? that well, I, I just by telling you this, I'm, I'm getting nervous. But yeah, super exciting. My only experience in conference was in Trivago because the, we are like our own internal conference. And I, I, I did a lot of talks actually there. And uh, yeah, I, I'm not, I think it's, will, it will be in English. And uh, they will also have an online event. So it, the, the tickets for the online event will be cheaper. They did tell me that I would get some tickets. So maybe I can do like, a, uh, I can give some tickets away or something like that to you. So if you are interested in that, do send me a DM or just tweet and tag me and say that you are interested because I can do that for you. 
and uh, yeah that's that's so cool i i'm so happy and yeah i'm excited also to share that with you and, and to tell you if this will bring any traffic or any interesting connections i think this will be really interesting and after that i'll be also on the web submit not as a speaker but uh, uh, I, I i won two tickets to get to the web summit so that will be also interesting but that will be only in november so it's still a long way yeah and that's it i want to finish this episode in this uh, high note a great news and uh, yeah i hope you have a great week and you already know if you want to support me you can become a wb space member 10 bucks per day per day Ooh, that will be great Per month, you can buy the bootstrapping guide that now is still in the early bird discount. So it's nine bucks and uh, people people like it. So the link will be in the description. Or you can buy the WB merch. You can use mugs and t-shirts and everything. Again, all of these links will be in the description of this episode. So you just have to go scroll and book, click and that's it. This was another wannabe entrepreneur. See you next week. Doom, 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 jazz.